I grudge them, grudge them on, you know. I threw him a fight for black liberation. And him a one true warrior. Them I want to try to stop him. But them can't stop the man. Them can't stop Raheem Shabazz. That's why anytime me want to listen to revolutionary liberation vibes, me tune into Necessary Blackness podcast. Me not hear them like a Yaga Yaga podcast them. I be your Necessary Blackness me rock with. Anytime me want your true warrior talking. Elementary Genocide provides a critical expose of mass incarceration, the war on drugs, and the connection between slavery, capitalism, and the prison industrial complex. Visit our website at www.elementarygenocide.com. Now available, Elementary Genocide, the school to prison pipeline. Elementary Genocide 2, the Board of Education versus the Board of Incarceration. And the newest release, Elementary Genocide 3, Academic Holocaust. Log on today to purchase your very own three-set docu-series. Wingy Apparel is the latest fly in revolutionary streetwear to hit the market. Wingy is the outfitters of freedom fighters everywhere. Wingy is a Swahili word that means abundance. No one has ever gone broke by giving. So if you have it in abundance, sharing is better than receiving. Follow us on Instagram at Wingy Apparel. That's at W-I-N-G-I-A-P-P-A-R-E-L. Necessary Blackness Podcast is independently owned, and we do not accept sponsorship dollars from corporations. We are supported by the people such as yourself who know that in war, the first casualty is the truth. We are at war with racism and white supremacy. We must continue to tell the truth. Support us by purchasing your Necessary Blackness t-shirt by sending an email to NecessaryBlacknessPodcast at gmail.com. Necessary Blackness Podcast, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. with award-winning journalist and filmmaker Raheem Shabazz. This podcast is only for those who are unapologetic because the mind of the conscious man or woman recognizes no monopoly on truth. Truth is relative and always to be sought. Peace and Black Power family, this is your host, Raheem Shabazz, and we are here for another episode of Necessary Blackness Podcast. And today, we're going to go over a couple of things. Today's an exciting day. I see the rejoice. I see the happiness. And I also see the hate. A lot of people are upset, but more people are happy than upset. At least the people I know. But I want to start off and I want to give a big shout out to our sister, Nubian Queen, Gwen Perry. And this is a sister that's in the Olympics and many of y'all may have seen the iconic photo with her turning her back during the singing of the Star Spangled Banner. Yeah, the sister wasn't having it. She wasn't uh, pledging allegiance to the flag. She wasn't participating in the singing of the Star Spangled Banner. And um, the mainstream media was in an uproar. And she gave an interview. And she simply said, all I said was, I respect my people enough to not stand for or acknowledge something that disrespect them. I love my people, point blank, period. Shout out to that Nubian queen for staying on cold and fighting against racism and white supremacy. Now, many of y'all probably don't even know why singing the Star Spangled Banner is disrespectful. You don't have to look no further than the third stanza where it says, No refuge could save the harling and slave. That's right, the harling and slave. But we managed to save ourselves. We managed to survive no matter what atrocities we face. No matter the brutal force of racism and white supremacy, we are here. We are still fighting for freedom, justice, and equality because we are resilient people and there's no other race of individuals that has survived what we have survived. So shout out to that melanin queen, Gwen Perry, for staying on cold. Also in the news today, we found out that the former Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, has passed away. And I find it very ironic that someone such as himself 
will pass away at the same time that Bill Cosby is being released. Racism and white supremacy is on the ropes, family. You have Derek Chavin in, and you got Bill Cosby out. White America can't be more upset than they is today. And Twitter was letting Donald Rumsfeld have it. I'm going to read a couple of the tweets. One of them said, For those too young to know, Donald Rumsfeld was a atrocious human being whose legacy is engineered unlawfully, disastrous, and unnecessary wars that continue to traumatize generations. He had no remorse for his role in the bloodshed. May he kick rocks for eternity. They want him to kick rocks for eternity. And then another person chimed in and they said, The only thing tragic about Donald Rumsfeld's death is that it didn't take place in a prison cell. And then they said that any obituary of Donald Rumsfeld that doesn't specifically state that he shared responsibility for a misguided war that resulted in the death of 4,000 American GIs and 20,000 or more Iraqi civilians is journalist malfeasance. So family, the white supremacists are on the ropes and they are very upset because this is a loss to them and white supremacists do not like to take losses. We know that. Because I say it time and time again that the model for white supremacists is win if you can, lose if you must, but always cheat. And that's what they did in this Cosby case. Because you gotta remember, Bill Cosby was tried twice for the same crime. Let me say that again. Bill Cosby was tried twice for the same crime. And in his first trial, remember, there was a ruling where they didn't find him guilty. That first trial was a hung jury. And that should have been the end of it. But once again, with racism and white supremacy, it's win if you can, lose if you must, but always cheat. And in the second trial, that's when they brought up the deposition that was supposed to have been sealed. And the agreement was that nothing used in this deposition can be used in a criminal case because it was a civil deposition. And if you go and read the 79-page decision of the overturning of the verdict and his conviction, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. But too many of us are too lazy to read 79 pages. But you don't have to read the whole entire 79. Read the last two pages. Read the summary. And you will see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, he did admit to indulging in drugs with these women, but he never admitted to drugging them unwillingly. That's the part people don't talk about. So, once again, family, beware of headlines from mainstream media saying that this is injustice, that this was a blow to democracy, because none of that is true. Bill Cosby due process rights was violated. You know, Judge Brown, he sent out a tweet because he said that due process is not a technicality but a fundamental aspect of justice. The arrest and conviction of Bill Cosby is not only the results of a broken justice system, because we all know that this system is broken, but it was also the results of the Me Too movement. Make no mistake about it, when it comes to the Me Too movement, Bill Cosby was always the target. It wasn't until black society started speaking out, saying, what about Harvey Weinstein? What about Epstein? That they began to focus on them. But this was after they got the conviction of Bill Cosby. And if black society would have not spoken out about those injustice and why you're not going after those that you deem sexual predators that are non-melanated people. 
they will still be out here to this day. Remember that. They don't go after their own. They always target black people. You are the scapegoat when it comes to racism and white supremacy. Bill Cosby was targeted long before this, but no one wants to talk about that. You know, Tariq Nasheed did a thread on Twitter. And shout out to Tariq Nasheed. Y'all need to go uh, check out his Twitter. And in his thread, he talked about the many targets of Bill Cosby is that he was targeted because he wanted to buy NBC. Now, I don't know for a fact if that is why he was actually targeted, but that possibility can exist. Because remember, we're dealing with someone who wants to maintain and control power, and they would do everything that they can in order to maintain and control that power. So that's not too far-fetched. He also talks in length about the killing of Bill Cosby's son, Ennis Cosby. Um, He was killed in what they described, when I say they, I'm talking about mainstream media, as a random carjacking. He was on a highway. What's the likelihood of a random carjacking on a highway? You know, allegedly his car had broke down because he had a flat tire, but he was driving a Mercedes Benz. And anybody knows that you can drive your car if your car is flat, like the mechanism for Mercedes Benz, you can drive off the highway to a gas station if you have a flat tire on a Mercedes Benz. Your tire never goes entirely flat when you can't drive for those that are Mercedes Benz drivers, right? And the individual that was arrested for killing him was a Russian. Uh, This individual um, admitted to killing him. You know, um, this individual was known for assaulting black people. But the interesting thing about the whole ordeal is that his money wasn't taken. His watch, which was a Rolex, wasn't taken. The car wasn't taken. So... That was a little suspect. And during that same time that his son, the same day, was murdered, he received a fax. And this fax came from a woman named Autumn Jackson. And this was an individual that said that she was the daughter of Bill Cosby. And allegedly, Bill Cosby had an affair with her mother, uh, I think it was 20-something years ago. She was in her 20s. She was a young girl. And she was going to extort Bill Cosby for $40 million. If he didn't give her the money, she was going to go public and say that he had an affair with her mother and she was the illegitimate daughter of Bill Cosby. That didn't work. She wound up getting arrested. And ironically... Two Russian individuals was involved in the case. I'm not sure if they got arrested. But once again, these was Russian individuals that was trying to extort Bill Cosby. So someone was after Bill Cosby. And I don't think it was just about money. They was trying to break this man. They was trying to shut this man up. But money is always the aspect. So that was one thing that he talked about. And then another thing, which the mainstream media, you hardly ever hear this uh, narrative, is that Bill Cosby and his wife, Camilla Cosby, owns a lot of property in Massachusetts. And their property is being looked at by uh, a gas company that wants to run a pipeline through their property. And Bill Cosby's not having that. The pipeline company is called uh, the Kinder Morgan Gas Company. And Bill Cosby and his wife was adamant about that. That y'all not doing that. And they were stopping billions and billions of dollars from this gas company being made. That right there will get a lot of things done to you when you're dealing with these billionaires that own gas companies because you got to remember there's so many individuals that's going to be millionaires off of this pipeline running through this property 
Bill Cosby has lawyers, he has money, he has prestige, he has power. But what he don't have is the complexion for protection. So, once again, family, these individuals would do everything that's humanly possible in order to bring down you, your family, and anybody affiliated with you. And Bill Cosby was that individual that I believe that they had their eye on. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to play a press conference of Bill Cosby along with his lawyers that he did as soon as he got released. And this press conference took place at Bill Cosby House in Massachusetts. His celebrity, his name is likeness to uplift women. This is a man who refused to perform at the White House with Nixon. Talk about it. Nixon put him on a communist list in the 60s, along with so many other great names like Dick Gregory, uh, Jane Fonda. How could a man who was being watched by the FBI every day be raping and drugging women in the 60s or 70s, especially a black man? Today, innocence came to Mr. Cosby with the help of these wonderful attorneys. Yes, yes! To his right, Woo-hoo! you will see Miss Jennifer Bungeen. She argued the appeal. To my left, you see Brian Perry. Yes. To Brian's left, really? Ashley, <laughs> Ashley Cohen. Ashley Cohen. And then you have Haley Colbell. Kelly Cole. These are women and men. They kicked ass. Who, who from all walks of life. As I said earlier, James Brown made a song. It's a man's world, but it would be nothing without a woman and a girl. Talk about Mrs. it. Mrs. Cosby was that woman. Yeah. She's the queen. Seven years. Yeah. She's the, the queen. queen. The yeah. matriarch of the Cosby family who fought for his vindication, who said he would be vindicated. And today, on this hot day, this is a hot verdict for us that That's we right. forever cherish. That's right. Because we got one of the greatest yes. or the greatest yes. entertainer alive today. Yes. Mr. Bill Cosby, Mr. Bill this great Cosby. American citizen, this American Yo, treasure. That's right. Right. That's right. That's right. With us today. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Hey, hey, hey.
and now he's doing taxes and he tells people here's a hidden loophole how to save money how to get more money back from the government the United States is built on loopholes there's always a loophole when it comes to white people and they use the laws to their advantage but when it comes to black individuals there's no loophole for us and if you do find your way into a system of racism and white supremacy and you're able to be victorious, you are a rare individual. You're a nominee. You're not a regular individual. This don't happen to everybody. I want y'all to remember that. One person that is visibly upset about this whole ordeal with Bill Cosby having his conviction overturned is handkerchief head bootlicking Sambo Coon Mark Lamont Hill I'm going to read y'all a tweet that he put out and listen Twitter went in on him he said Bill Cosby is not innocent he has not been exonerated his release means that Bill Cosby a sexual predator was incarcerated within a criminal justice system that has as little regard for his own rule and procedures as Cosby does for his victims (sighs) <sighs> you know, I don't really mess with Lamar Hill. I don't mess with you, Mark. But I had to respond to that. And I had to tell him, like, yo, come on. Your white handlers got rid of you. They do what, you know, racist white supremacists do to their tools. When they done with them, they break them. And they broke you. And I told him that he needs to stop it because he's not getting his job back on mainstream uh, media. So you got to be careful of individuals like Mark Lamar Hill because they're doing everything humanly possible to show their white racist zaddy that they're on the side of racism and white supremacy and they'll do everything that they can and that's humanly possible and that's within their power to make sure they don't align themselves with the black struggle he will speak out about the treatment of Israel to the Palestinians but he won't speak out about the injustice of Bill Cosby remember this is the same individual within hours of the transition of our beloved mother queen Dr. Francis Crest Wells and he has some horrible things to say. Remember, this is the same individual that said things about Minister Farrakhan. It's almost clockwork for Mark Lamont Hill to say something that's detrimental to black society when he gets on mainstream platform. Because he know if he continues to do this, that the slave masters gonna throw him a bone. But you know who wasn't having it? Felicia Rashad. And she had the white supremacist and a lot of you coons mad. She tweeted out, finally, a terrible wrong is being right, a miscarriage of justice is being corrected. And that shouldn't be surprising to nobody. She has been supporting Bill Cosby from day one. She said that this was an orchestrated plan by a lot of powerful people. And she stood on that, as she should. But now they're calling for her firing. Um, I think she's the dean of art. She's supposed to start a new position at Howard University. And they're saying that she should step down. Uh, There's even an online petition going around saying that she should be fired. Listen, you have a right to speak your truth, whether other people get uncomfortable or not. If she believes in that man innocent, who are you to chastise her for believing in something that she believes in? So shout out to that sister man for staying on cold and, and speaking her truth. I'm not going to really do a long podcast. I just want to come in real quickly. I'm actually having uh, a build out being done so I can have a, um, when y'all see the new setup, 
we working on a new setup for the podcast. I'm working on some other things. Um, so I want y'all to continue to stay tuned to Necessary Blackness Podcast. Um, I'm actually doing IG Live more often. So make sure y'all follow me on Instagram at Raheem Shabazz. Make sure y'all follow me on Facebook at Raheem Shabazz. Twitter at Raheem Shabazz. Continue to tap in, family. And if you don't already have uh, your Elementary Genocide DVD, you can get that at elementarygenocide.com. You also get that on Amazon. You can also stream that on Amazon. And you also can stream it on Quali TV. And make sure y'all continue to subscribe to our YouTube page. We are almost at our monthly goal. Peace and Black Power family. This is Raheem Shabazz and I'm out.